views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome once again to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff, and welcome everyone to November to our first show of this brand new month. I know everyone says it, but I cannot believe that it is already November and we are almost at the end of the year. It, uh, it is almost like time is compressing and going faster. But to start today's program, I'd like to remind everyone that we were we are still very much under the influence of this weekend's magical Taurus full moon, which is showering all of us with love and abundance. Now, this has much to do with the energy of November, which is already a powerful month as it holds the frequency of the number 11. You know, everyone, 11 is a very sacred number, for it not only represents the divine, but it also represents rebirth and also higher consciousness. It is also associated, the Posse of Angels wish to remind us, with angels. And the Posse of Angels is saying that these energies provide a perfect recipe for the manifestation of opportunities meeting connections and making connections for money, for love, for success to be experienced. Now think back to what seeds you have planted this past year and you took action towards tending and nurturing and growing these seeds, um, like I said, this past year for you and myself and everyone are really going to be able to reap the rewards now as we go into November in this magical month. All we need to do is to start taking steps forward in the direction of our choosing. The Posse of Angels is emphasizing that although this energy is available to all of us, we actually have to take action to feel, and to see this energy which is going to operate in our lives. So from the beginning of the year, 
we were all called in one way or another to start a new chapter, to break free of old patterns, and to start something new. And we now are experiencing the energies to help us step forward with that brand new start. So, get your thinking caps on. Think about what direction you want to go in. Drop down to your heart, feel it. Think about what you want in your life and then start taking steps to make it happen because these energies of November 2017 are helping us in so many magical ways to make the fulfillment of those dreams come true. You know, everyone, as 2017 does wind down, it will certainly be a year that many will not forget, including the revelations and the lies being disclosed in our political system, in our voting, our government, and now the disclosure of the dark world of Hollywood's sexual favors and pedophile rings. You know, with so many people now willing to come forth and share their truth, the old days of complicity and silence are disappearing. And so as so much of our world crumbles around us, the conscious collective finds itself at a very different and interesting point in our ascension process. After years of clearing and cleansing, doing healing work and forgiving, many of us are standing at a new threshold because we're finally being faced with taking all the spiritual laws and uh, wisdom that we intellectually and rationally know in theory, and we are transitioning the knowing of that knowledge to be practically felt in our high heart chakras. Now the posse of angels is sharing with us that the conscious collective has shifted to such a clear, high, awakened vibrational state that all that will be left is unconditional love. And you know what? That is surprising many people. On last week's radio program, I had several callers say that they were surprised by their new loving feelings towards people from their past where before there might have been triggers like animosity, resentment, anger, and bitterness. Because of this shift, many will be presented with opportunities to reunite with people from their past, and this is especially our biological families. And with so many people traveling to be together with their families at this time of the year, well, the posse of angels knows that there may be tears of joy reuniting with loved ones, but they also know that there may be tears of resentment and frustration for those who find it a very great strain to be with their families. So, the very wise posse of angels wish to address this in their topic today entitled Healing Family Relationships. You know, everyone, many times our relationships with our biological families are the hardest to deal with as they are often laden with the heavy burden of blame and seeing ourselves as victims. Well, the Posse of Angels says that there are several higher reasons for so many of us returning and reconnecting with our families. By returning to our birth families, many of us experience just how much our attitudes to our families have changed, as many of us are now living a life of acceptance, non-judgment, peace, and pure love. Also, by visiting our families, it gives us a chance to bring into divine alignment anything that still remains which is not of unconditional love and forgiveness. With so many awakened and conscious people having cleared their issues, we have allowed ourselves to detach from family members' stories from their self-imposed 
tragedies, and sometimes perpetual dramas. By detaching and allowing our family members to live their own journey as they see fit, we love them for exactly where they are and for exactly where they choose to be, which is not always easy because a lot of times we project where they are onto how we should act and how we should think. Having done so, many of us have transcended the need for blaming and seeing ourselves once again as victims. Now, in addition, many of us have enlightened to the knowledge that we are not here to teach anybody anything, including our families, on how to act or how to instruct them on what they need to do to be more spiritual, on what they need to do to live a more conscious life. You know, thinking back, <coughs> excuse me, we certainly wouldn't have wanted anybody when we, we were not awakened to tell us to live our lives. With clear-eyed awareness, many of us have now taken responsibility for our contribution to the perpetuation of separation and negative emotions that we might have held for certain family members. Now, having done the above, we've taken back our power by choosing to be loving and peaceful and happy and accepting rather than choosing to be right. We've chosen to come home to who we are, which is our divine, eternal nature of pure love. And because many of us have chosen to come home to ourselves, we choose to literally go back home to our family roots. And no matter what the reason for the reunion, it presents us with a deeper meaning for us going in the first place. Now, I had the perfect, I have the perfect example of this of, from one of my clients. My client, Mary, now this is not her real name, but let's call her Mary. Mary experienced what it felt like to return to her family this past year. She revealed to me that growing up, as the only girl in her family with two brothers had been very, very difficult and challenging for her. In their religion and in their culture in which she was raised, her mother and father praised the sons and virtually did not recognize or listen to their daughter. It was voiced that education would just be wasted on a girl as she was very pretty and they knew that she would be married off to someone rich and have children. And while Mary was not against marriage or having children, she grew up deeply sad that her intellect, her talents of writing were not encouraged and praised like those of her brothers, putting all of her efforts into her looks. Well, Mary made the decision to get the recognition of her parents by marrying a wealthy man. She had children, and she went on to live many years of being subjected to his abuse. After she decided, with great deliberation, to divorce, she decided that even though her family did not honor her talent of writing, she would honor herself and she began to write books. Only out of a sense of duty in the years that followed would she force herself to go home for visits. On the days before her departure, she would begin to experience heavy feelings of either being judged by her family for divorcing or not following a path that, uh, that, that uh, they prescribed for her. And every time she visited, her feelings were like a premonition, a self-fulfilling prophecy that had her filled with rage and hurt at her parents' blatant disregard for her feelings and for her efforts and for not listening to her as they praised her older brothers. Through our intuitive counseling sessions together, Mary could clearly see 
why she had chosen certain souls to be her parents. She also saw, because of her own actions in previous incarnations, why she had chosen her parents' contrasting characteristics to help strengthen and challenge some aspect of her life's lessons for her soul to grow spiritually. Through those sessions together, Mary became empowered to respect her talents as a writer, and she decided to sign on with a literary agent. So with renewed enthusiasm, she finished her first novel, and it was sometime later that she joyously called to tell me that a publishing house was going to publish her first book. It was an absolute dream come true for her. She decided that since it had been some time um, since she had seen her family, that she would return home for a visit. On the journey, on her journey home, she found herself getting so excited because she was going to finally prove to her family that she was a recognized writer and she was smart enough and good enough to be published. Sitting with her family, she couldn't contain herself. She excitedly told them what she had accomplished as she had, as she had kept the knowledge of the publishing of her book a secret from them. After she finished very excitedly telling her parents, the only thing that her mother said to her was, you know, your older brother is a brilliant writer. Why doesn't he get a literary agent? It was in that very moment that Mary realized that what her mother said or did not say no longer had any effect on her. With her healing work that we did together, she was no longer reactive. And she knew that her mother's words and actions had nothing to do with whether she was talented or not, whether she was smart or intellectual or academic, but it was more of a reflection of her mother's programming and beliefs to favor her sons, as sons were everything in their culture. You know, in that very instant, when Mary realized that she no longer needed anyone else's recognition of her talents. She smiled knowing that she was no longer needy and she certainly was no longer dependent on her family's approval. In fact, she later told me for the rest of the visit with this huge burden of uh, this emotional um, uh, sadness lifted off of her of not being accepted or recognized, she started to see her family only through the eyes of God. Because she was no longer reactive, she saw her family as lovely souls with their own free will who could create and make choices along their own journey in life. And you know, everyone, instead of being judgmental and bitter and resentful and angry, Mary chose to bless her parents and respect them for exactly where they chose to be on, their, on the path of their own spiritual journey. Turning the mirror back on herself and remembering that it took her to the age of 42 to awaken to who she was. Mary let go of judgment on how her parents should act, on the, how they had to act, and allowed them the same freedom of choice that she had on whether to awaken and enlighten. With her surrendering judgment, she stopped blaming others and using them as an excuse for not honoring her God-given talents. And by doing this, she created an enormous amount of space to be able to receive. She started to live through her divine, eternal nature and her unlimited power inside. Mary said her trip back to her family was not so much about reuniting with them, but her revelation was 
It was more so of reuniting with herself. For the reflection of her family showed that she connected with her power within to choose what path she wished to follow without taking it, without asking anyone if she was worthy or deserving enough or capable of stepping forward to her dream of becoming a published author. So everyone, if you find yourself reuniting with your family and you find it very trying as we go into the holidays, here are some helpful hints from myself and the Posse of Angels. Now, firstly, the Posse of Angels wishes for you to know that everyone, and they do mean everyone without exception, that is in your biological family, you carefully chose those specific souls to be a part of the con of the contract for your present incarnation. If you didn't write them into the contract of your life, they wouldn't be there. You did this because those souls agreed to help you with the spiritual growth of your soul. Now, in addition, you chose them to have certain characteristics that would help you learn your lessons. And yes, even if they were controlling, opinionated, abusive, deceitful, and just downright very difficult to be with, this contrast was what was needed for, for our souls to learn to stand up and respect ourselves and to become empowered. And, and in, even though it may be difficult to find out what the presence of someone in our lives means, especially if they've hurt and abused us, when we view it from a higher angel's perspective, you know, we, might, we may see that their presence um, from a very different point of view. The posse of angels is sharing with us that we, ha we might have been an abusive person in a previous incarnation. We might have been uh, deceitful and hurtful, and we have chosen let's say, an abusive spouse or an abusive um, friend or an abusive enemy or an abusive acquaintance to be in our lives so that we can experience what it feels like firsthand to be abused by another. You know, bringing the feelings of resentment, regret, sadness, bitterness, and anger towards an abuser back into divine alignment of complete unconditional love, the posse of angels is saying, this is not easy. But by doing so, we do not condone what they did to us in any way. But by choosing to bring our feelings back to solely pure love and forgiveness, we learn the lessons of tolerance. We learn the lessons of patience acceptance and forgiveness for someone who is so vastly different from us. In other words, we start to see them as divine beings, as a reflection of God's source underneath their decisions and choices. What then happens, what this then does, is it releases any triggers and reactive behaviors within us. And again, it creates space for us to experience untold peace and untold happiness as we no longer are holding on to negative energies with any expectation and with any attachment. You know, if we have any expectation and attachment as to how people are supposed to or should act, it is an illusion because each and every one of us has free will. The Posse of Angels also wishes to share with us that if you are challenged by your family this holiday season, they want you to remember that what another person says or does has nothing to do with you, but it has to do with their own beliefs and their own programming and the triggers and the reactive behaviors that may be that they might be consciously or unconsciously allowing to steer the ship of their emotional state. Now, please do not take what a person does or says personally and remember to bless them 
for wherever they choose to be along the path of their journey. And you know, everyone, with so many of us having cleared and cleansed our negative emotions, we've come home to living from our divine eternal natures. And because we know that it's always been the power of love that will change the world, we're beginning to see the result of the power of light that so many of us have held for so many years. Coming from a more awakened center, many of us are no longer reactive and energetically have shifted to only allow that which is of the purest and utmost truth to be part of our lives. And because we've shifted to only accepting truth, the world around us and anything that is not truthful is being dismantled and the dark is crumbling before our eyes. With the approaching of Thanksgiving, which is the most traveled time of the year to be with family, well, the Posse of Angels would like to share that it's important to remember that each relationship is a blessing as we wrote those people into the contract of our life, each soul helps us to grow, challenge us, and many times they provide the contrast that allows us to be more compassionate, more loving, non-judgmental, and forgiving. They are wonderful actors, our families, in the theaters of our lives, and they help us to establish a more truthful existence for ourselves. And in this way, there are no mistakes in relationships as they are all divine. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff on Angel Healing House Radio, and we are going to take a short break. And after that, we're going to be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings. So see you soon. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Hoff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies nourishing and revitalizing you take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release this wonderfully narrated cd provides vivid visualization soothing and inspiring music and an angel's choir that will bring you peace clarity and a newfound awareness visit angelhealinghouse.com today to see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We are uh, Claire Candy Hoff and the wonderful angelic family, uh, the Posse of Angels on Angel Healing House Radio. Uh, we've been speaking about healing family relationships. Great topic as we are going into the holidays and so many people uh, get together and have reunions with their families and the Posse of Angels. And I uh, gave some really good tips on how we can remain peaceful, kind, compassionate, and, uh, and, and gentle as we go into those, uh, the, uh, as we go into the holidays and we uh, get together with our families. So let's go to uh, our callers. If you want to call in for a free angel reading with myself and the wonderful Posse of Angels, you can always call in on 
1-800-242-2819. Let's go to our first caller. We have Diane in California. Diane, nice to have you with us. Uh, how are you today? Hi. I'm really good, thank you. Oh, I so get inspired with your words. They're so healing to me. My quick question, can I wonder, I go back and forth if I'm go if it's better to move or to stay where I'm at. And I'm wondering if the posses have any insight for me. Okay. All right. <laughs> um the first thing that I'm hearing, Diane, is there's only what you desire. Uh, now, what they mean by that, uh, there is only that which uh, um, makes your heart sing. There's only that which is, uh, you know, um, gets you in an emotional, uh, uh, a highly uh, excited, emotional, passionate state. And they're saying... Should you? And there's no shoulds, but would it be more beneficial to move, or would it be more beneficial to stay? Okay, they're saying that it wouldn't be bad if you stayed, but they're saying yes, beloved Diane. They're saying it would be more beneficial for you if you moved, and I'm not surprised because this. Um, November 11th gateway, uh, the 1111 uh, that we are going to be experiencing is going to open up so many different um, uh, opportunities, avenues, connections, and we are being directed, those of us that are very clear, we're being directed where to step. Now, the only thing that could stop uh, you from realizing that's on what, what, on those opportunities and connections on the other side of you stepping forward is your own fear, is your limitation of thinking, uh, I'm comfortable where I am, or, you know, it's not bad where I am, but uh, then I'd have to pack, then I'd have to do this, then I'd have to do that. But they really want exactly. us to... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I... you sound exactly like you're in my thoughts. I'm like so blown away. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were showing me. They were showing me you standing before boxes, and it was like your arms were folded and going, "Oh God, I can't do this again." You know, it's like, "Don't ask me to do this again." Um, and that kind of energy. Oh, but they yeah. really, Diane, they really want you to know that you, uh, the fulfillment of your desires and your wishes are on the other side of this right. move. Wow. You can't, okay, you so can't let me, have can what just, you want until you, until you move. <laughs> and do you see me moving out of state or local? Can okay, I ask let me that? Ask them. Yes, of course. Um, oh, do you see okay. Diane moving out of state or locally? Once again, out of state, locally. Yeah, lo they said local. Okay, good. Okay, all right. Um, that's that's <laughs> really so incredibly calming for me, and 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 reinforcing what I need to do. And I can't, you know, as much as I love where I'm at, I, that's why I go back and forth. Maybe it's just time for a change. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, that's what yeah. that's what each of us is craving now, and what we've been working towards in 2017. We might have gotten the signs that what we're doing feels a bit stagnant, like a coat that's grown too small for us. In fact, the first card <laughs> that you, the sweetie, the first card that I chose for you is the movement card, is the travel card. This is the six of oh, wands, wow. and this is confirmation that yes, you not need to move, but it will be most beneficial. So what they want you to do is be like a little kid while you're packing. Put on some happy music, throw open the windows for lots of fresh air, and say, I'm going on an adventure. Come on, angels. Let's get rid of and throw out all that clutter, all that stuff that I don't need to travel because I want to travel much lighter to open up space for the new to come in. And that is the way they want you to prepare for this move. Uh, the next card for you is the, um, is the Eight of Swords. And this is the trust card. Always for me, the Eight of Swords is you might be blinded to 
you know, where you're going. They actually, even before you you know where you're going, and Pete and I have done this many times before um, in the 14 years that we've been together, um, is that, you know, we have gotten this feeling like we're going to be moving. We don't know where, we don't know when, and we've started to box the house up. And in every, every time, it's like when we've been given the sign, it's like, oh, half of the house is done or three quarters of the house is already done. So they really want you to trust that you will be moving and making movement. And then the next card is the two of wands and the two, <clears throat> excuse me, the two of wands is really the world is your oyster card. And, and you will then, once you move, you will be given the signs as to the people and the information that's going to easily come in for you, Diane. I am quite excited for you for your new start. Wow. Thank you so much for every energy you share with me. It's so wonderful. Love you back. Oh, okay. I love you too. Take care. Thanks, God bless you. And happy travels. Take care. Thank you, God. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And you know what? I often say, everyone, that yes, people do call in and have their individual concerns and their questions. But really, if, with Diane, if you're listening, um, and even if you're not calling in today, if you're listening to this program, this message is for you as well as it is for me, is we are all being given those signs and those feelings for that new beginning, for that new start. And uh, the Posse of Angels are saying that all we need to do is action it and to take inspired action, and then we will see the magic. But we must take that action towards, um, towards it when we feel that uh, and when we, we feel that those signs are, are giving us uh, that, uh, that new impetus to, uh, to step forward. Let's go to our next caller. We have Julia in Florida. Julia, you're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio and Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? Hi, doing great. How are you? Excellent. I'm so glad to hear your voice. And uh, what's going on? In, what's going on in your life? Well, it's funny that your topic was about family and healing because I worked with a healer yesterday, and family was the top of the list of what I was working on. So yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, did you feel like any of the uh, the suggestions that the posse of angels gave? You know, like these people wouldn't be there if we didn't. Uh, choose them, choose that soul to be yeah. part of our biological family. And on top of that, I mean, the Posse of Angels always go one step further and they say that, and if that person has contrasting characteristics that, you know, causes us irritation and pushes our buttons and causes drama, it's a really important lesson for us to have tolerance and forgiveness, non judgment, and, uh, and only uh, peace. Um, it's a it's a great it's a great example for us to hold that energy that this has nothing to do with me. This is their paradigm. Yeah, and when you're in it, it it's like, are you sure it doesn't have anything? It feels like, <laughs> you know. Oh goodness. It's true. Well, anyway, it, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so um what I was calling about today is um uh, I'm feeling that you know I need to get myself busy at doing something because I spend too much time on my head. So um I thought maybe, you know, I should start looking for employment of some sort. I'm not really okay. sure what or where or how or any of that good stuff, but uh okay. that's what I wanted to call and what the posse could share with Excellent. me. Excellent. Excellent. Well, the first thing that the posse of angels are asking is, what do you love doing? Uh, do you love, um, you know, um, creating things artistically? Do you love uh, um, spending time with children? Uh, do you love dogs? Do you love... Uh, it, 
you know, take some time to think, what do I love doing? And many people stop themselves from saying this because they immediately say, oh, but um, I can't make a living out of that or there's no way that I could, you know, get money from doing that. And that and that's putting the cart before the horse um, in order for us in these energies to uh, to be completely and, and utterly in our divine eternal nature is to do what we love doing. So, for instance, if you said you loved dogs, um, then uh, the posse of angels would bring you signs on how to engage with dogs. Uh, you could be a dog walker. You could be a dog groomer. Uh, a friend of ours loved dogs so much that she drew to herself. Uh, she's now the manager at a, uh, at a kennel. Um, which also has a dog grooming thing. Um, a friend of ours volunteered um, f uh, at, a, at a rescue shelter uh, for dogs, and then she got a paid job from them. Um, so, you know, uh, just drop down to your heart and say what it is that you love doing. Now, does anything come to mind? And if, it, if, if something doesn't come to mind right now, maybe it's because you... Um, a need to create that loving space within yourself is, you know, what do I love doing that will nurture me? Um, and I think that'll be a, a great help. And then ask your angels for signs. Please bring me signs of things that, uh, that are creative, uh, that help me to express myself. You know, I love, I love this action that the posse of angels have, have told uh, my clients over the years, Julia, they say, take 10 or 15 minutes every day and say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, angels, for this extraordinary uh, job opportunity that, I, that, that, that is mine. It's already mine. And I love doing what I do. And I work with amazing people. And I work in a wonderful environment. And feel what that feels like to do what you love doing. You know, they say find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Um, I do this. I've been doing this for six years now, every week, and um, I've never worked a day in my life. Um, my Angel Healing House is 14 years, 14-year anniversary, and I am just excited and wiggly today and, you know, passionate <laughs> about, about doing this. Um, and the universe keeps keeps creating different avenues of abundance for me to keep doing what I love doing. So for the first thing that they said is ask yourself, what would I love doing regardless of certification, regardless of uh, diplomas, regardless of the money, regardless of the, the connections, what would I love to be doing that would nurture and nourish my soul? And then that opens up this huge gateway fine for God. signs and opportunities on how we can step forward. Let's go to these cards and see what comes out for our lovely Julia. I'm excited for you because you're finally going to take that step forward and open yourself to receive what you love doing. Perfect. Da -da -da -da. We have the ace of swords, which is a new beginning for you. This is, this, this is confirmation that it's a new beginning. All you needed to do, because it's the swords, is to have the mental clarity in to be able to say, huh, okay, if the universe desires exactly what I desire, it always does, I, all I need to do is be clear. So let's just say, Let's just say you decided to work with dogs. I'm not saying that, that, that the posse of angels are saying that's for you, but then you would take that inspired action forward by looking up uh, veterinarians, looking up shelters, looking up kennels, looking up grooming, looking up anything that you can do to create that energy around you. And that person who would be interested in the dogs would be... so maybe so surprised that they would be bringing to themselves um, all those uh, all those messages 
and those um, those signs and how to step forward because every uh, the laws of attraction, the laws of cause and effect, we put our intention out with enthusiastic and passionate excitability and then the universe answers us. The next card for you is, I love this, it's the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Swords is the action card. You know, that's the card <laughs> about taking quick, swift action and that's what, that's what it's needed now. You felt this feeling in your heart and you're going to be taking action towards that which you love. And the next card, oh my gosh, you can't make this stuff up. The next card is the wish card, is the nine of cups. And so what they want you to do, Julia, is they want you to say out loud what your wish is. Speak it. Speak it out loud. If you don't want to do it on air, you don't have to. But they want you to find time. The full moon would be wonderful because the full moon, as we've experienced uh, this past weekend, is releasing. Releasing, you know, that which uh, you want to uh, let go of and surrender in order for the new to come in. So I release any blockages. I release any, um, any, anything that is sabotaging me from creating this beautiful life. And then I wish, and then state to the universe what you wish. Um, and, uh, and you will be amazed with the energies of November, the 1111 gateway that's coming up. You'll be amazed what happens in your life. Um, and you're ready for it. The posse of angels are nodding their heads. Yes, 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 yes. You're ready to step forward with this mental clarity on how you can action your dreams. So I hope that's been helpful for you. I'm excited to hear what's going to yes. come in for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's wonderful. I took a bunch of notes. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Sending you so much love, Julie, in Florida. Yes, and uh, you. you look after yourself. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Wow. Another one. Another caller with a new step, taking that new step. So uh, let's go to our next caller. We have Beth in California. Beth, you're with Angel Healing House and myself, Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing very well. And what's happening with you? Well, yes, this topic is just so beautiful because... I, you know, continually am being asked to use my tools of forgiveness and and um, with my niece slash daughter, and it's really um, teaching me the importance of not taking things personal and also looking at her and seeing that she um, isn't getting away with her behavior anyways. It's not like it's only towards me and it's not impacting her and and then having compassion for the way that it's impacting her has just been huge. So I love this topic, especially this time of year with the holidays and everything else. But I have a question. Yes. Okay. My question is, I need, I would desire to move forward. I have a book that I'm getting ready to start to work on. And I have many closets that need to be cleaned. And my my limited self wants me to use the excuse of doing my closets first before I get started on the book, and I want to know if the angels feel that I wish I should do first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to keep procrastinating on both of them. Okay, all right. Yes, uh, yes they're saying that, that you are using this as an excuse. And the funny thing about it yes. is is that you don't need to choose. They're saying, they're saying, beautiful Beth, you don't need to choose. You can work on your closet for an hour a day, and then you can go work on your book. Um, each of them, they want you to know, is equally important because the closets and the environment that we live in is representative of what's going on inside of you. So if you do have clutter in your house or if you have things yes. that are disorganized it's 
it's something inside of you, as you know. I'm, I, I, I know you know this already, but for everyone else, um, it's just representative. And they're saying, you have set it up so that you think you have to choose, but you really do not have to choose. Um, you, you can do, as, I, as they said, do your closet for an hour. You know, um, if you've got a really long, large closet, then take one foot from here to here and do that. And then do that for another hour a day. And, the, and you keep chipping away at it. And the more you chip away at it, you go, okay, uh, when, when you'll have time, you know, um, I'll set a time at three o'clock, my timer on my watch or my phone, uh, ding, okay, it's time to, to devote an hour. Time to devote an hour to my closet. And then it's time for me to do my book maybe work a half an hour or an hour on the book or whatever, and then you'll find your increased enthusiasm uh, the more that you devote to this. Because, you know, uh, November really is about taking that inspired action in those areas that we might have felt were stagnant before. Let's go to the cards and see what's going to come out. First card that's coming out for you is the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is really about taking, taking empowered, taking your power back. Okay? It's a card, too, if there were others that would be about competition. But the person you're in competition with is yourself. It actually, it's always yeah. about ourselves. <laughs> and you've set up this, this sabotage where, oh, if I have to make it about this and this, I'll stay on the fence. In true Libran fashion, because I know that you're a Libran, you know, we go, well, if I do this and if I do that, and then we end up doing nothing. So um, they do want exactly. you to take inspired action uh, towards that and empower yourself. And then you become the empress. Okay, the Empress is that card of grounding things in the physical reality. Um, you can get very creative with your closets. I mean, you can buy matching hangers, or you can buy pretty boxes, or you can buy potpourri, or you can, you know, make it, don't make it a chore. Make it something that's beautiful. Make it something that you're nurturing yourself. And those energies will translate very diff in a, a, a very different feel to, oh, my gosh, i got to go and do this. Um, and the next card is coming out for you is the Page of Pentacles. And the Page of Pentacles is um, the messages around feeling abundant by devoting yourself to your closet. And to this will be nurturing yourself nurturing your environment, and also devoting time to the book as well, um, you will feel more abundant inside. And as a result, you will see more abundance in your life. So um, they're directing me to these wonderful cards here. I'll choose one more card, <laughs> which is 26, which is called the Talking talking Smack, which... Uh, Okay, let me just, talk and smack. Okay, that small That's thing. That's me. You, that, that small thing you've been doing, get over it, girl. There's no reason to compare yourself with others or put yourself down because there's no one like you. You are capable of doing anything. So all that remains are three little questions. Why, why, why? And they all come up with, it's just an illusion that you've set up to sabotage yourself. So go out there, wow. declutter, stop talking smack. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I and I hope that's been helpful for you, sweetheart. Yeah, it's perfect because as soon as you started telling me the first part before you read the next card, my limited self was like, oh, yeah, well, that doesn't help. Now I have to figure out how to do that. And then all of a sudden you said, stop tacking smack. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll just do what I need to do. Forget it. I'm not going to dialogue about it anymore. All right. I'm wishing you a beautiful day. Take care. You too, Angel. You too. Love you dearly. Bye. And that just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you so much to all my callers. Thank you to my listeners. My heart is just so full of love and, and just gratitude for all of you that helped me do what I do on this beautiful platform of Transformation Talk Radio. And uh, remember to go to my website, angelhealinghouse.com, to look up more information about myself, 
Posse of Angels, and my wonderful books, uh, wonderful channel books that you can purchase there. Um, and also uh, remember to go out this week and to fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. I'm sending you love and as always, angel blessings. And I look so forward to speaking with you again next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.